A dunk from Jonathan Bear. Asheville leads CSU 2-0. Bulldogs have won five straight games in this series, looking for their third consecutive season sweep. Cortez Mitchell with a spin and the finish. Don't you think that's one of the big changes in, uh, for CSU? Cortez Mitchell has, has gone to a new level. Senior from Jackson, Mississippi, averaging over 12 points a game in the Bucks' last six games after he averaged just six and a half through the first nine league games. Flan Fleming's done a lot of that of late. Keen, the Bucks' pressure defense. Now a drive to the basket, it's stripped away and will stay with CSU. I did not see a lead official down there. <laughs> I was. I looked up and there were two officials. There's nobody, there's no official down here right here. They're both on the sides. Ahmad Thomas with the strip. Tied up at two as CSU controls. Both teams will play quite a bit of 1-3-1 zone and they try to force turnovers out of that. Keeling for three, no good. And the rebound weak side goes to Ahmad Thomas. These are the two best teams in the league at forcing turnovers. CSU better than 17 per game. Asheville almost 14 tonight. Which team can take care of it better here in this one? Very tight man-to-man -man helping. Thomas, a 17-footer over Jones is no good. And Keeling has the rebound. Pretty good defense so far. Mitchell finds James Howard open underneath. And he lays it in. That's a good quick transition. Something we've seen the Bucks struggle with are the hands of the big guys on those passes, but Howard handled that one well. Asheville doesn't have a lot of size. Bear at 6'9". Pretty much everyone else that sees major minutes is 6'4 or below. Teague on the baseline jumper. Nothing but net. Nice shot over Howard. Maceo Teague, 27 points in the first game against CSU. He had 23 in the first half. He was red hot at the outset as the Bucks dug themselves a big early hole. How about Cortez Mitchell going to the bucket strong for two? Cortez doing his thing. Asheville pushes the other way. Venata's pass is picked off by Fleming. Flan on the break with a two hand. Oh. <laughs> That'll bring the Buck Dome to life. They'll get that net straightened out. Flan Fleming, three steals in the win Thursday against Longwood. The steal there, and he comes right into your living room with a two-handed dunk. You mentioned something earlier, Kevin, too, about the UNC Asheville not substituting a lot, but you see Coach Radabaugh doing that, trying to keep his troops fresh. So later in the game, that uh, war of attrition may come the way of the Bucks. Jordan Jones, who had 10 points in the win over Longwood, checks in. Alec Wanook right into the game for Asheville, and he lays it in. That's a little reverse. Good English cue on that cue ball on that one. Wanook, another senior, comes off the bench for the Bulldogs. Bucks by two. Flan Fleming, who energized the crowd with a steal and dunk moments ago, going at Raekwon Miller here. And Miller will be called for the foul on the floor. John, this is going to be probably a much different CSU team than Asheville saw back in Asheville a month ago. You know, we've said that, and I think it's true because they just have so much more confidence. It's been night and day shooting the basketball these last six games for CSU. A quick miss there. Ahmad Thomas, such a tough matchup. He is fouled and will shoot two. We see that speed coming down through there. It, it, if you take a charge on that one, you might not come back in the game. They list Thomas as a guard at 6'3", 215. He is kind of a hybrid player, kind of guy you see at this level, and he is a terrific player at that. Senior out of Danville, Virginia, 30 points in their overtime loss Thursday to Liberty. Thomas, just the second player in conference history to go over 1,000 points, 600 rebounds, 200 steals, and 200 assists. So he does it all for Nick McDevitt's team. Trying to tie it up here. Deontay Buskey came in for the Bucks as well at that last stoppage. Freshman out of Daphne, Alabama. Backing up Cortez Mitchell at the point here late in the season. McConico has been hot with his shot of late. Now to Keeling and now to Fleming. Flan driving at Thomas, kicks McConico. Left wing three is way off an air ball. Right into the hands of Venato. 
Might have forced that one a little bit, and the result showed it. Conico 17 for 36 from three. That's 47% over his last six. And good help there as they double Thomas, but they call a foul. And over two shots again for Thomas. We return. Some highlights for both teams early on. Our first media timeout. Tied up at eight. Keep it right here as the Bucks are about to take possession, led by redshirt sophomore quarterback Shane Busnell who had the best game of his career production-wise last Saturday. Obviously, you got to take the opponent into consideration, but Shane was very good. 14 out of 17, 273 yards and three touchdowns. Bucks threw for 300 yards total, just the second time in the last six years they've gone over the 300-yard passing mark. It looks like Mississippi Valley came across before the snap of the ball. They're actually going to call that on the right tackle, Bracken Smith instead. Sure looked like the defensive lineman came across and touched him. You know, I don't know if it was because we have a tight end to that side and he jumped so he was not the next guy outside. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's, that's the only thing I could think of there. CSU penalized six times for 60 yards last week. Noah Schuler for seven on first down. Noah, the redshirt junior from nearby Stratford High School, has been the Bucks. Top option in the rushing game, 79 yards, a touchdown last week, had the two TDs at Elon two weeks ago. We did not see Shannon Hamilton last week, who's nursing a hamstring injury, and he is not in there on this series to start. Taz Lindsay to the top of your screen here, primarily a running back. We'll see if he motions, and he does. They pull it from him on a jet sweep. Busnell will keep. And goes up to hash for about five, but flags come in. And that's a great read by Shane. He's just reading that defensive end, comes up field to tackle the jet guy, just pulls it and gets a, a few yards, but I think it's coming back here. Penalties at times a problem for the Bucks last season, and we definitely saw that two Saturdays ago at Elon, Danny, uh, 10 penalties for close to 100 yards, uh, partly what cost them that game. Yeah, and definitely. And, you know, Elon's a great team now. I think they just won again today um, versus Albany. But, I mean, still, when you have that many penalties, you, you really can't win. I mean, it's such a shooting yourself in the foot like that when you don't need to or can't afford to, that's just going to result in a loss every time. So that's it. CSU back in the second and long here. Back to the option game. It's the freshman Elijah Henry who's got some speed and a chance to show it off here. First down a whole lot more before he's bounced out of bounds at the 31. It was a great, just triple option right there, just our bread and butter. And, and it was a great cut block on the outside by, I think it was Kenny Dinkins, I'm not really sure. But he gets a nice cut on the corner, boom, out front. And the line, offensive lineman getting downhill too. I mean, you, you always love seeing the big guys get down there. 31-yard burst for Henry from Charlotte, North Carolina's Rocky River High School. Some of the best straight-line speed on the team. And Dinkins, as you said, helped free him up on the outside. To the air, pass right on target, but Cam Brown drops it. He doesn't usually drop anything, really. I think he was just so used to making the one-handers and in practice and, uh, and, and games, too, really. So that was just kind of a layup there. And those are other small things that you can't afford to do, right, uh, along with the penalties, especially – when we get into conference play and tighter opponents. Brown had a big day last week. Six catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown, a 52-yard score. Kenny Dinkins had two TD catches as well. Harris and Schuler are the backs. Busnell will keep running off right tackle and lowers his head. Has about five down to the 27. Tough running right there by Shane. It's a great pickup for a first down. Um, it looked like there was like a, three guys on on uh, Mississippi Valley's team over there that weren't blocked or anything, and Shane still picked up those yards. Mississippi Valley was better last week defensively against Grambling, only gave up 303 yards, six turnovers in that game, really swanted against them a 38-6 final. First two weeks, they gave up 683 yards to North Dakota State, 521 to Southern Illinois. Third down and six here for CSU. And they will shut down that run play. Bring up fourth and long. 
fourth and intermediate, and Tyler Tekak is going to trot out to try to put points on the board. Here's Logan McRae, College of Charleston's first baseman. Fouls it back to the screen. McRae at 321, five homers and 28 knocked in. CFC led by first-year head coach Chad Holbrook off a losing season last year, a rare losing season for what's been a very successful program here the last five or six years. They have certainly had an excellent start to this season. Bennett's 0-1 in the dirt. Maggio keeps it in front. Well, I remember the University of Georgia coming in for five games here in Charleston with uh, College of Charleston, three games, CSU, and then the Citadel, and, and they were swept by this College of Charleston team. That was an impressive week for sure. That's a Georgia team that has gotten up in the top 25, at least they were last week. That one's hit well to left. If it's fair, it's gone, and that ball is gone, a home run. A two-run shot off the bat of Logan McRae, and College of Charleston for the second straight night takes a first-inning lead. Well, that was a uh, hashtag hanging curve, I think. That ball just hung right up there. I'm sure that McRae's eyes got really big when he saw that ball floating across, and you've got to keep that ball down low. Last night in the first, it was Luke Morgan who had a two-run homer to get the Cougars going. CSU kept him scoreless after that. Tonight, it's McCray who hits a no-doubter. Only question was whether it be fair or not, and he knew it when it left the bat. Umpire Vincent Locklear right there on the line. That one's chopped through the middle and into center field for a base hit. Danny Wondrak with a single up the middle. He's got 10 home runs. 11th most in the country, but goes after the first pitch there and is aboard with a single. Well, this field, and we've seen it throughout uh, these home games, has a propensity for high hoppers getting through. See Ryan Stoudemire holding Wondrak on at first. Stoudemire getting his sixth start in the field tonight. We said Bennett working with his catcher, Christian Maggio. Jason Miller is the second baseman. Ryan Risk at shortstop as that pitch is high to Cameron Garrett. Third baseman, Kyle Vesneski, and then left to right in the outfield, Kyle Horton, Josh Litchfield, and Alex Andronica. Uh, Bennett, once again, got to keep that ball down around the knees. A little better, but a nibble at that strike zone. Bennett's numbers coming in. This is sixth start, and he has struggled 0-3 with a 9.95 ERA. Opponents hitting 3.45 against him in 19 innings pitched. And John, this is a, a lineup that's a pretty good one. They're hitting 290 as a team. That's 49th in the country. 300 Division I teams, and they have power as well. 31 homers as a club. Well, it makes that outing last night even more impressive than holding this team scoreless after two runs in the first. Bennett able to come in with a strike, three and one to Garrett. Two nothing Cougars on a two run shot down the left field line by Logan McCray. Man aboard at first and that one's hit deep to left, maybe got a bit under it. Horton back near the fence is gonna make the catch on the track. He just missed that. Well, Bennett's heart jumped a few beats, I guess, as well as Coach Adam Ward on that. Tell you what, the game last week against Longwood, that's probably gone. The wind was really a factor that day. It was. Not so much tonight. Would, have been, would probably easily have been gone. Yeah. That, that's right. Well, Bennett might have gotten away with one there. And